Hey Gautam, I have a doubt man. I've just started learning big data. So I've just installed the Hadoop Spark in my local system, in my laptop, and then I've started learning. One of my friends suddenly called me and said like, uh, like why are you learning with your personal laptop like in your local system? So I asked, then what, where should I have to learn? He said, you can go with cloud, right? So people are moving from on-prem to cloud. So you have to learn big data in cloud. So I've, I've just got confused, like I'm in the learning phase, whether I need to learn or with respect to the laptop, whether I need to learn in my laptop or I have to go for cloud. I've just got confused between this on-prem and cloud. Can you please explain? Okay, so you two got the confusion. Okay, I'll, I'll explain you. So don't get confused, I'll explain you. So. If you, if you see the people who have asked you this question, right? So why you are practicing in on-prem? Why not cloud? So I'll tell you what is on-prem. So on-prem is something, the cluster, the server is within your organization. So you, the, your organization is completely responsible for the cluster and everything. And it's like permanent hardware and softwares, it will be deployed. So it's not cloud, okay? So if you take uh, the servers, the on-prem stuff, right? For example, you have to run a job for 10 days. Okay, and then you don't want to run a job for like two to three days, you don't want to run a job. But even though if the job is not running, the cluster is not used for two to three days, still you have to pay for it. That is the one problem with on-prem. And secondly, so now imagine that you need, you need to have some resource, the scalability, you need to add some resource, like you need to add some RAM to your cluster, you have to add some hard disk to your cluster. It's like you have to buy it. For example, I want to add 4 GB RAM to my cluster. Now I go for Amazon and I've just bought 4 GB RAM and I'm adding it for, for something like uh, 2000 rupees or 3000 rupees. I'm buying a RAM and I'm just adding it to my cluster. Now after a few days, the requirement of RAM, the new RAM that I've added, the requirement is done. Now what I can do with that RAM, right? The requirement is done. Just for four days, I'm just buying a RAM for three to 4000 rupees for one node, like that I have 100 node cluster, then the money that I'm investing is just for four days. Why should I have to get the RAMs as permanent? Uh, service, right? I, I don't want to get, get it for permanent. So these kind of issues are there with respect to the on-prem. There is no issue with respect to the tech stack of big data, whether it is an on-prem or cloud, there is no uh, performance issue or nothing is there. It's all about the cost saving with respect to the environment. Now, if you go for cloud, so imagine we have different cloud providers, Amazon, Google Cloud, Azure and IBM Cloud. So many cloud providers are there and each of these cloud providers have their own big data service in a different name. If you take Google, they give big data service in the name as Dataproc. If you take Amazon, they give their own data, big data service in the name of EMR. So similarly, other cloud service providers also giving the big data services. Now, if I move my on-prem cluster to cloud, the advantages are pay for what you use. That is the main advantage of going for cloud. So I'm, I'm, I want to run my cluster for next 10 days. Okay, pay just for next 10 days. And then you are not going to run any job for the two days. So cluster is going to be idle, then shut down the cluster, you don't want to pay for it. Even though you shut down the cluster in on-prem, you have to pay for it. And you want to add some resource to your cluster, and you need to add a 4 GB RAM, as I told you in on-prem scenario, you want to add a 4 GB RAM in your cluster. Just add it for two days and just pay for only for the two days. Once the requirement is done, you can detach the RAM. So you can detach the RAM from the cloud services. So this is an advantage of it. Now when it comes to the learning perspective, okay, my friend is asking me to learn in cloud, not in on-prem, why? So, okay, I, I'm just asking a question to the people who asked me this or who asked this to you. So, just ask them, the hive, the speak, the scoop, the flume in Hadoop, you have hive, pig, scoop, flume and in Spark, you have Spark, bad, Spark, SQL, Spark, streaming and you have Kafka, NoSQL database and is there any difference or the syntax changes or the architecture changes is there with between the on-prem Hadoop and cloud Hadoop? On on-prem Spark or Cloud Spark? No, there, o there is no difference. You can ask this to the people who have asked you the question. So if you ask this to them, they will say there is no difference. There is no difference between the Hive in on-prem, Hive in Cloud. There is no difference between the Spark in on-prem, Spark in Cloud. Then, then I can learn it anywhere, right? You can learn it in on-prem or you can learn it in Cloud, anywhere. So the only difference between the on-prem to Cloud, I just already told you, it's all about the cost saving with respect to the environment. Okay. Now I will tell you one more thing, when you have to learn cloud computing services other than big data. If you, for example, in my case, imagine my on-prem big data project has been migrated to Amazon. In Amazon, I said the big data service uh, provider name is, in Amazon, they are giving big data service in the name as EMR, Elastic MapReduce. 
Now imagine my uh, on-prem Hadoop cluster has been moved to Spark cluster, the big data cluster moved to cloud Amazon in the name of EMR. Now again, I'm going to run the same Spark job, Hive job and everything is there. But apart from the big data service, Amazon provides other services also, data services also. Imagine there is a use case in my new project in cloud. We have to run all the Spark job and finally I have to write my output of Spark job in Redshift. So you can ask me, what is Redshift? Okay, Redshift is a data service. It's similar to Hive, which is provided in AWS. It's not there in on-prem or Redshift is not there in any other cloud seller. Only Amazon has it. Since my big data project is already in cloud, so we are trying to make use of other data services what AWS is providing. Now only in that case you have to learn some extra services what AWS is providing to you. Now the same scenario if my project is moving to Google Cloud. In Google Cloud the big data service name is Dataproc. Now my Spark, same Spark job is running in Dataproc. Now I want to connect my Dataproc, the Spark job to some other services in Google Cloud. Imagine there is a service called BigQuery in Google Cloud. BigQuery is similar to your Hive and similar to the Redshift what I told you in AWS. Now in Google Cloud, they want me to write the Spark processed output in BigQuery. Then I have to learn what is BigQuery. Only when in that case, I have to learn some extra services in Cloud. Now imagine my project has been moved from on-prem to Cloud. But I'm not going to use any other data services in cloud. Only I'm going to use Hive, only Spark, only means you don't want to learn any cloud things. You just, only your project environment has been migrated. The internal tech stacks are same. Now I'm the newcomer. I'm just uh, a very new uh, person onboarded to the job in the team. And they are giving me an IP address. Please connect with the IP address and you run your Hive job, Spark job. This is what I'm getting from my manager, imagine. So as a developer, I will never come to know whether this cluster is running in cloud or whether it is running in on-prem because they gave me an IP address and they said we in our project scope we have only Hive, Scoop, Pig, uh, Spark, all those things and I'm okay with it's there in the cluster I'm using it. Now only if my manager or my colleague or I have to ask them or they have to tell me the cluster what you are using is running in cloud and it is running in Google Cloud, Amazon Cloud only then I will come to know okay that my cluster is running in cloud not in on-prem because why I was not aware of it the reason is the IP address to which I have connected and then I'm running my Hive job, Pig job, Scoop job, Spark job because it's all there in on-prem also in, in cloud also. So I didn't get the difference whether my cluster is running in which environment. Now imagine I'm the newcomer to the team and my manager is sharing me the IP address and he's telling run your Spark job and write this output to BigQuery. Okay, then only I will come to know, okay, so BigQuery he's saying that means the cluster is running in Google Cloud data proc. Only then I will come to know. So for beginners, what I'm coming to say, so beginners, please try to focus and concentrate only on the big data tools first. Don't go for uh, uh, cloud or any other thing. Just go for big data. In big data, I, I repeatedly used to say this in many videos. In big data, we have two Hadoop and Spark. For beginners, only these two is very important. If you take Hadoop, HDFS, Hive, Scoop, and if you take Spark, you have to go with Spark, batch, Spark, SQL. That's it, five components, that's it. Don't want to go for Spark, Streaming, Kafka, NoSQL, nothing required for entry level. So just get, learn these five topics, get into a job, get some experience and then go for cloud or Kafka, Spark, Streaming, data science and so on. So, so if you say I'm already an experienced person, now I can have a goal of learning new technologies like cloud computing or, or Kafka, Spark, Streaming, something like that. But for you, your goal should be get into the big data job with these five components is wide enough because like these are all the way mainly used uh, tech stacks in big data projects. So, and one more thing, if you still say, no, I want to learn uh, the big data services with cloud only, if you say in that way, so which cloud you will learn? I asked this question to one person. He said, I will go with, uh, because one guy told me, no, I have to, even I'm a beginner, I understand. I want to learn only in cloud. Then I asked them a question. So which cloud you want to learn? Google cloud. Okay, you learn all the big data service in Google cloud and you are going for an interview. And in interview, they said they are not using Google Cloud, they are using Amazon means what you will do. Because we don't know the company which we are attending, whether they use cloud or on-prem. Even though they use cloud, we don't know whether they are using Google Cloud or Amazon Cloud. So that means the main thing what they use is big data. That is for sure. So learn that. Because any companies you go for an interview, for sure they, they use big data. Only the environments are different. Okay, just please go ahead with this five components, learn it on your local system, don't go for cloud and don't get confused. Just please focus on only this five components in the big data stack stack. Just learn it, complete it.
attend some interviews and if you think that you have completed this five components and then maybe you can learn some extra stuff but when you start learning please do this five components learning only don't get confused with going for cloud or something extra things that is what i want to convey in this video i hope you understand and many people asked me this question in recent days that's why i made this video so thanks for watching please do subscribe to my channel forward this to your friends and colleagues thank you